Joining us now is Georgina Riley. Georgina, welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Thank you. Nice to see you. Well, I mean, we are so thrilled now. We've had um, every main cast member on the show, and you are our last get. You are the the, the big bad, the main villain, and um, one of the few characters in the new series that's tied to legacy characters. So uh, we're going to get into all the geeky stuff with you. But before we get too into the weeds, could you just tell us a bit about your background, how you got started in the business, and how you came to Quantum Leap? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, actually, first off, I want to acknowledge you guys for your attention to detail. I've been listening and like- Have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. I was wondering where Allison was. Um, <laughs> but I, um, yeah, no, no, I have because I find, you know, you get told about podcasts and you're like, I want to, you know, obviously you want to know what you're, it's a professional thing. You should like want to know what's going on and you know where I'm going and stuff. But I, I really do admire your attention to detail on things that are just, you know, it's, it's, it's impressive. So I'll just start with that. You can, you can keep that. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, what, how I, uh, where I'm from. Well, I was born in England. Um, I left when I was 16 after my GCSEs, which no one will understand except Matt, maybe what that is. <laughs> and, um, I moved to Canada and I finished school there. And then my family is a bunch of artists, mainly musicians. Um, so I kind of grew up in an artistic household. So being, a, a an artist of some kind was just kind of the natural thing to do kind of like you know when you're born a lawyers and doctors and stuff and um so I just started acting I called I finished high school and I called an agency and I said I'd like an agent please because that's I wish I mean I wish I had kept that that sort of like just assuming it would work out like that <laughs> but it did it did um they were like uh sure because I think they were just so shocked at just like the directness of the question um and then just from there, I, you know, I started working in Canada and, you know, bit by bit and show by show. And I met Martin Garrow in Canada um, when I was 24. So like last year um, mm -hmm. and on a show. And that's kind of leap forward, like all these many moons later. That's kind of how I ended up here on Quantum Leap. And did you know at the point that... Um you you auditioned for Quantum Leap that this was going to be a recurring role. What what awareness did you have of this? Actually, my me, I didn't have any information. I didn't know what the character was. I had no. Martin gave me a call when I mean the pilot already happened, and obviously they were reshooting the pilot. And Martin called and said, "Hey, like, how are you?" <laughs> well, I got an email yeah. saying there's interest in you for a guest star on Quantum Leap. And I was like, oh, cool. And right now I have a almost five-year-old and I've really been trying to stay in LA for work because I'm, we're all, my husband's also an actor and we're always traveling. And I just decided this year, I was like, I'm going to try and just stay here. And um, thankfully when Martin called, he was like, yeah, I, I heard there was a guest star. And I was like, oh, I'll go do a guest star. Sure. Like, where is it? It's in LA. Great. And then Martin actually called me and he was like, well, it's not just a guest star. We're not, you know, with these things with shows, you know how it goes. You never know, especially recurrings. It's just how the storyline is going to evolve. And as you've seen with the headquarters stuff, it's just an ever evolving thing. And with time travel, you know, you do this here and then that changes that here. So maybe that person doesn't exist anymore. Like, I don't know. Um, and that was kind of, I was, he told me, I was like, well, who's, what's the character? And then he said Dean Stockwell, and I was like, well, I mean, he's like acting royalty. Um, and I got excited. I had seen the show as a kid, like here and there. My dad and my brother definitely watched it. And that was kind of it. There was a lot of mystery. There, the way you guys are feeling right now is how I was. I still am feeling to some degree because, you know, the scripts are still coming. Well, it, it's it's funny that um... – they had mentioned Dean to you specifically um, when they approached you to play Janice, did they give you the background for the character sort of where it fit in into the legacy of the series to prepare you for um, your overall place in the universe? I guess, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, how much did what come before inform where they started to approach your character in the new show or okay, if you can even answer that um 
Well, I, I you obviously have seen what at the time when I f- had the first call, I didn't know it was as the scripts came that this was going to be an important. I mean, I don't. I actually don't even know when Janice came into play because they did the pilot. And I don't know if Janice was always an idea or not. Um, but it was definitely going to be an important piece. Being Al's daughter, it obviously ha- mm. comes with a lot of weight and a lot of significance from the original. And I do think it's important, like as a character. What what you saw in 103 with what she went through with her mom and like growing up being completely groomed. I mean, I kind of think of it this way, like you guys love Quantum Leap, right? And imagine if your parents like created the show and like you went to screenwriting school and you were like learned all the episodes, which you guys have, and you knew everything about it and every actor and they're like, you're going to take over and it's the only television show that exists like in the world. <laughs> And then one parent's like, actually, you know what? After all those years of prep, we're just not going to let you do that. So I think the reason why Janice, some people are like, oh, she's a villain or, you know, I'm like, well, it's kind of fair. Like she's supposed to be there and it would have been, you know, um, it was her legacy to inherit, in my opinion. Um, And that was all I was really told. But obviously as the scripts came, I'm finding out a lot more now because as you see in the series, this is very sprinkled right now as we get towards the end of season one. So Mm. that answers the question. Yeah. And I I think what we're, um, this isn't a question really, just a response Mm. to what what you've said. Mm. Um, We know uh, a couple of us have read the original pilot script and we know she was in that. And I hadn't read the original, so I don't know. Yeah, so she she does seem to have been a, a, a concept from the very start. And certainly what we're seeing is, although there was this kind of antagonistic element at the start of the show, we're now learning that, yeah, she's working with Ben, she's helping Ben. The last time we saw her, she was she was saying, she was trying to give Ben some sort of warning. <laughs> so cat tail? <laughs> yes, she likes to get involved in the interviews. <laughs> it was just so dark. And then it was like your own little tail just came up while you were talking. <laughs> Um, don't yeah, worry, definitely a cat. There. Um, sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, um, just <laughs> just an observation, really, and I, I don't know how that that affects your performance or your approach to the character. That um, she she was sort of set up to be the antagonist or the villain of the series, but there is obviously this other side to her that um, she is she's there as the support for Ben, yeah, just a support that we don't fully understand yet. Yeah, that's what I love about her. And it's actually been one of the harder uh, har- harder roles in a way for me to balance and in, in, in the performance, especially in the episodes coming towards the end. Um, it's been really interesting because with what I can say and not say, um, you know, it, it's this how much information that one can give away and – I'm trying to put this in a way that I can say it. It's been a really fun character because every episode has been slightly different and it definitely started off a certain way, but there's all this knowledge underneath it. And I think it's always fun when you go back and you rewatch something from the beginning, you actually see, you you then re-see it. Now that you know this at the end, you start seeing those details in the beginning. And I've been very, I have so many questions for the writers a lot because I'm very aware of the fact that we're going to, that sometimes things change. And I'm like, I want to make sure that what's happening here, you know what I mean? If you went back and watched it, it makes sense with where we're heading, even though that sometimes changes. And as an actor, that's a really fun thing to do because I have to really think all the time of like, well, how would I talk to this person differently from that person? And why would I talk to this person that way? And what do I know? And like all, because Ben and I know about what's coming. Do you know what I mean? It's, Mm -hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's it's definitely been an interesting juggle. Uh, when you were working with Susan, uh, playing your mom, Beth, uh, were you able to kind of uh, talk amongst each other about your backstories for like your individual characters and how they work into the Calavici family? And like, did you did you have any um, thing in your both your minds when you were playing those characters that we might not have seen on screen, but informed your performances? Yeah, we hung out in the trailer. I love Susan. It was very funny when I got the job. 
Susan had a scene with magic, I think, in an episode before I had a scene. And I met her in the trailer and I saw her and I was like, I get like, well, I actually had looked this up before when I, when I was talked about the role, I looked up, I watched like all the scenes and I watched the scene where Sam comes back and talks to Beth, which just is the most heartbreaking scene. And then the other scene I love is the scene where Al talks to Sam about, I think this is, this is the reason for this leap is for you. Beth's the only woman I ever loved that whole scene, just like. <laughs> he's just he's just so good in it and he's like pretending to not care you know he's looking at the the hand link while he's talking to him anyways and I saw the two of them and I was like well I'm lucky because like I get why I could be their kid so that's like a nice it's you know this was the way the role had to go obviously with these two already existing which I think is so cool because there's this link to the past and I asked her so many questions about you know what I mean like I was like well how do you feel about the new show and like what was it like working with Dean and you know, all these, it was very fun. And we sat in the trailer for a while and we talked about, you know, when we were working on 103, that scene, we really had to, you know, I was like, well, what do you think? Well, how long has it been since, you know, dad passed away? How often have I seen you? Do I talk to you very much? Like, what's our relationship? And but, um, Susan and I definitely kind of went through all those details and it, it had definitely been a while since I had seen her. But I think, you know, Janice had only just figured out what her mom did. And um, so it was very still present for Janice in that moment, plus the information that she obviously in 108, we know, got some information from Ben and why she's even doing any of this. Um, and yeah, we got to talk about lots of, it was fun. And we went over the scene and, and we talked about all those details. And I love that because I like hearing also what, you know, you kind of come in with your ideas of what you think they think, but then they tell you what they actually think. And it's always like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. And that's the joy of creating something with someone. Right. And putting that backstory in place for just to inform the way you do the character. Now, as we saw at the end of 108, we've sort of had a, a sea change in the way we're going to be viewing Janice going forward. Maybe not such a bad guy, maybe just working across purposes at Ben's request. So potentially an ally. Um, will we be able to see do you know a little bit more of that backstory of how she was being groomed to work for the project and then magic decided well conflict of interest maybe too close will we get to see any of the lead up that led to the i guess the initial meeting with ben and then the stuff that that leads up to her working against the project for all intents and purposes um i can't say yes or no because i'm not sure because we still have like you know, we still have the rest of the season. We're still shooting. So I can't say yes or no. You do there. I definitely have a lot of questions about my relationship with magic because I think I was groomed by, and this is my personal, what I've created for myself is that I was definitely groomed by my dad. I'm the youngest of the four kids. So I'm like the baby and I think that I was around, you know, all the others had gone off and I was with, you know, Al all the time and I was interested in what he did. And I think, I don't think that Al, I remember listening to you guys on earlier podcasts about like, well, do we think Al was just sad forever? And like, you know, it's an interesting, I think that he got on with my personal thing is I think he got on with his life, but I don't think, how do you ever? And I think it might've been you, Matt, or I'm not sure who it was, but it was like, how do you ever forget your friend, your best friend who's just mm. lost in time that you completely you know what I mean? You'd never, you'd never go, you'd get used to it. Like we all do in those yeah. ways that we can think in comparison, but you never, for, you would never forget because there's, he's still alive. Like he's still alive for all we know. Um, and I think I always had the goal of like, you know, I want, like, I think, you know, she had the goal of what her dad would have wanted. And I don't think there was ever an agreement that she was going to work for the program. I think she assumed it. Um, hmm. And I, cause she's pretty sure of herself and she's pretty smart. And I think she was like, well, obviously I would run this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then, cause that's the conflict of just assuming something that then really goes a different way and not even knowing it was your mom who didn't even want you to do it. Um, there's mm -hmm. definitely, I think some things with magic, finding that relationship with magic. Cause there's a history there underneath, but also keeping the story going forward. You know, because as you know, there's so much information to get into these episodes. Um, but I've definitely thought about um, 
of that. Whether we'll see it fully, like a flashback to it, I cannot say. I, I'm interested. You've um, you sort of mentioned a couple of times about yeah you know, the relationship with magic and um, yeah you know, whether or not we'll we'll see this develop. So far, what we've seen of you on set has been. I, I think you, you had the work with Susan. You've done some work with Ray. Have you actually had much chance to interact with the rest of the cast and crew, or have you been kept quite isolated? Um, I don't know what would give away something. I, um, without <laughs> this was just more. I'm just more talking socially, if anything, that rather than uh, yeah, I was in terms of isolated. spoilers for the series. Yeah, I was pretty isolated in the beginning because I would just pop in. I mean, a lot of my stuff was me by myself, right? Like you know, yeah. with the, right. the imaging chamber and um, yeah, there was definitely I was not around the main cast at all. Um. Which was fine because it's kind of like how Janice is as a character. Mm. But I did get to finally meet Ray, um, who, as you guys know, is just really wonderful, and Caitlin. And you know, on shoot days, obviously, when we're we, you know, in the trailers, we all kind of pass one another. And so, but um, yeah, I've met I've met more people now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to see? Unintentional <laughs> fishing for spoilers. What do you think? What do you think that's going to... What are your ideas? Oh, do you want... Well, our, our speculation? <laughs> yeah, I now love that, um, Or what you want. Yeah, I mean... Uh, so, I mean, as of the time that we're recording this, it's just the end of 108. We just found out that Janice is working at Ben's behest to save Addison from something. Um, I think that now that we have that shift in perspective, I'm hoping that we bring Janice into the fold somehow and that we see all of you guys working more in lockstep towards a common goal instead of across purposes with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you probably can't answer that, but you asked what I'd want to see. That's what I would want to see yeah. because I'm intrigued by it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. See, I I feel the opposite. Um, I, I like the idea that maybe – Ultimately, they are going towards a common goal, but have different ways about it. And there is still this this ongoing, slightly anti antagonistic relationship where you have the project team trying to achieve something, um, and uh, Janice and Ben, I guess, trying to achieve some the same thing, but in very different ways. I think that could be an interesting thing to play with. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I wish we did this interview after a different episode. <laughs> <laughs> We can always have you back. Yeah, I think those are both really nice ideas. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very oh, kind. Yes. Very kind. So you have gotten to basically have a fan dream. Um, your character is the only one that has handled uh, one of these. Mm hmm. Uh huh. So tell us um, a little bit about um, the the prop that you guys were using for the hand link. It was a little bit different than this one, and we've seen Janice now used it. I think two or three times on screen that we've seen. Yeah. Are you guys still using that the old stand-in hand link? Have you switched to because I know that you can get these now. Are you going to go the more colorful? Mine doesn't have as much color as that. Mine's a little right. bit more bluey, greeny. The blue right. So yeah. I think Matt can give you the history on that. Yeah, so the the one you're using seems to be a, a genuine relic from 30 years ago, which is in itself quite a surprise to us. Um, so it, it was a it was a stand-in hand link that was used for kind of stunt purposes or rehearsal purposes. But the the fact that there's a, a 30 year old prop still kicking around, albeit not a screen used one, yeah, um, they pulled is, it out of very all cool to us as fans. We yeah, we we spotted it and um, immediately recognized it. So. so you haven't gotten to use the new ones yet, the the, the new uh, brighter colored ones yet. Uh, yeah, Deborah had uh, ordered two of them, and we we were hoping she was going to use them on the show. Oh, really? I don't know about mm -hmm. that, but I will say that when you hold those things, you feel the fan base's feelings. <laughs> you just do. You're just like there's so much significance to this thing. And, you know, and I have listened to you guys and I, you know, and I, and, and other people who are like, I love Quantum Leap and, and it's cool to be a part of something that already has all of this connected to it. You know what I mean? So, and I feel it and I feel, you feel a responsibility too, because you're like, 
God, I'm out. I mean, when I first got the part, I was like, do I need to have a New York accent? And like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> watching out. I was like, you know, we're obviously 30 years in the future. You're not exactly like your parents. There's like, and Janice is a little more like has, there's a seriousness right now that's obviously going on. So Janice isn't getting to, you know, it's not her on like a Friday night, you know, it's, it's a serious situation. So, but there's definitely glimmers of, um, I don't know, Al was pretty dry. And I do think Janice has that in her as we see more of what's to come. But yeah, holding the hand link was very cool. And having his ring, there's a lot, like there's things for me that I find because of the love for the show and because of the love for Dean as well. I don't know. It kind of comes with you. I know that sounds so silly because it's just props, but like they hold a significance that actually is helpful. Have you referred back to Dean's performances in any other ways to help inform the way you carry Janice, the way she presents herself physically on screen, um, anything like that? Well, I watched I, I watched a good amount of Al. I also watched Dean in interviews in general <laughs> because I just, I mean, his career is very interesting. I watched like this 45 minute just like interview that I found. And um, my main thing with Al is obviously, look, we're dealing with it with a different time of television and, you know, so things can't be exactly, you know, in a different time period in general. But one of the things when I actually just watch him is I try to think of it more like, this is my dad. You know what I mean? Like, what would I, what are the things about my dad that I like? What are the things that I don't like? What are, you know, those Al, what am I like? And I think that, um, I think she was – someone like Al, to me personally, would raise you with such certainty in certain things in your – like, you're, you know, you're just like, it's going to be okay. I'm going to figure it out because, like, you know, what – like, that was something that I have created for myself, that she was raised to be pretty um, confident and strong. I mean, um, yeah, th that's kind of how I've looked at it because to copy him completely – wouldn't really make sense because I'm not him and you're not exactly like your parents. Do you know what I mean? And then there's also Susan's performance and who she is as the character of Beth and what that would give um, Janice. So that's kind of how I, how I use that to the best of my ability within the storyline too. There obviously has to be moments to show these things. And I think it just depends on what, what situation a character is, is put in, you know, but I think the importance of the project and what the project means um, that is definitely right now, just a very solid part of Janice. And that's really her. She's just very w focused right now on that. Are we ever going to find out why Beth held, uh, your character back from working on the project? She kind of mentions it in 103. They don't really get, I mean, mm -hmm. she just says, you know, she's like, I just didn't want you to become like your dad about it, whatever that means. Cause obviously we, mm -hmm. that could mean lots of different things or become obsessed with something. Um, I don't know, maybe Beth has, it'd be cool to see her again. It'd be cool if she has some information that maybe other people don't have. I personally, this is me now. I personally would love magic and Beth to have some sort of relationship. I think that would be interesting. Um, I just thought I they were cute that. together. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I just feel like there'd be a conflict there. I don't know. I just thought that was, I was like, you know, I thought in their scenes they were cute. That's just me. Um, yeah, that was kind of all she said is she just didn't want her daughter becoming obsessed with something, but maybe she was aware that this was, you know, um, maybe she had spoken to magic a bit more and knew about what the project was doing and just didn't really want me to get caught up in that. You know, because I do think Janice has a life. I don't think her life was just this. I think, I think Janice assumed she was going to work there. And that was probably, I mean, I don't know how long, how long has this been going, the QL program right now? Do we know that? I think that they were established it for five years. They were building it and then Ben leapt and they still weren't quite ready. Right. But um, they were at the five year mark. Right. So, so Janice was rejected a bit. A while. I think she'd already kind of, you know, she was rejected. And then Ben came to see her however long ago. Has that been revealed? Uh, well, we know it's at least six months. Exactly. Six months ago that he started disappearing. Yeah. Hmm. 
So I think Jan- Janice had kind of gone off and started her own, like kind of gone with life. I don't think she was sitting around waiting for magic to call. I think she was like doing other things. And then Ben shows up and, you know, I think she's like, well, obviously, I mean, <laughs> you need me. Um, so, um, yeah, that was all. And I think maybe Beth, maybe Beth knows something. That's all I really know about that. And then what she said in 103, which was just, I just don't want you to, you know, like me with my five-year-old. I just don't want you to climb the thing. I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. But it's just, <laughs> not. just on a much bigger scale. Like what if I got lost in time? Who knows? All right. <laughs> yeah. Mother's It'd be a bummer. That, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I had a yeah. silly question about the um, the Halloween episode, Oh o- Ye of Little Faith. Uh, there was a set photo that was released of the shadow and it was the only photo that the actor wasn't given. And there's like some speculation in the fan community. Was that Caitlin? Was that you? Do you know, did you play the shadow? There was a person like that looked kind of like you, kind of like Caitlin, but in heavy black makeup, a demon makeup wig. Were were you privy to that uh, during your filming of the Halloween episode or were you all like green screen or? I didn't get any fun demon makeup. Um, Okay. I don't know <laughs> who that would be. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that eliminates you as a suspect. So that's right. Mystery continues. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Did you enjoy uh, filming those little parts of the Halloween episode? Yeah, I did. I mean, I had to do pick up. I mean, it was kind of like a pickup situation for me, just getting in those last like moments and stuff. Um, and uh, but that episode in general is very fun. The leaps are so fun. I I I I have leap envy. Um, because I love I love period pieces. I'm a big like I've worked a lot in different time periods in my career, and I love it because I love, I just love what the what the crew is doing, like in regards to like wardrobe and makeup and set. I mean, they're pulling these things together under like, it's crazy. Like every you know when you have a show that's set in the 1800s, the whole show is set in the 1800s, and you're pulling everything and you're set dressing and you're good, right? But when you're getting scripts so fast and you're like, well, now we're in the 60s and now we're in the 90s and now we're here, like I think it's so impressive just everything they're pulling off. And then I get, yeah, I get, I get costume envy because I'm like, that looks kind of fun over there. Like I want to, mm. I mean, I want to leap. Would you leap? Mm-hmm. You'd leap, right? Like in real life, you if you had the option. Well, uh, only a million percent. Yeah. 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 As long as yeah. I bring my daughter with me, then me and her would travel through time. Go through, go together. Well, I think we're hoping since, um, ever since that reveal that Janice has her own imaging chamber, that you, you get to do, no spoilers, I know, mm-hmm. but you get to do more of what Addison's doing and having scenes in the present day, doing all that stuff, and also popping up in the past. So, yes, I need to show up over in a bright shirt, <laughs> smoking a cigar, maybe. Yeah, yeah a cigar. Yeah. Yep. Just calling calling people nozzles. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> you see me uh, leaping in 1970. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that part out. <laughs> They'll be like, she's trying to take my job leaping. I just like period pieces. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so that's something we'd like to see. I mean, you're asking us what what we'd like to see, where we'd like it to go. Um, in as much as you can tell us, where where would you like to see Janice wind up? I'm similar to you guys. I I think I kind of I never like removing conflict completely because that's no fun. I mean, you know, it's fun to have some some drama. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't. You know, obviously, I'd love. It'd be so cool to, to, you know, find Sam. That would be the ultimate, you know, for, for Janice to do that for, I feel like that would be very emotional for Janice, like through mm. her dad. Like, I think that would be just that one scene alone. would be just like, I'd be like, I'm good. That was good. That was, how great is that? That's so awesome for everybody. That would be a very cool thing. Um, other than that, you know, honestly, I just get excited because when I get the scripts, it's not, it's always a little bit different than what I'm expecting now, which is fun for me. And that's why I like being an actor. Cause I like just getting scripts and figuring out like, Ooh, what am I going to bring to this? And that's the excitement of it. So I'm just open for the ride. Cause it's got a lot of options to it, which I think is what's cool about 
having headquarters is like, you know, it's a slow burn right now because it's all being established. But I think there's just, it's cool to bring in this new element to the show and have, you know, more things about what's happening in the day tied to the leap and like trying to fix the leap. And anyway, I think, um, yeah, that's my long answer. <laughs> well, if you want to see if we can arrange that uh, Janice rescues Sam, Alby has Scott's number. So Alby, you'll, you'll give Scott a call, right? All right. We'll, 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 we'll get Scott on for we'll, we'll put that in the works for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That'd be so cool. And then we'll have to, I'll have to talk to you once you have other information where we can really, you know. Yeah, we'd love to have you We've back. We've been hearing that. One. Yeah. We, we've been hearing the same thing from uh, many of the cast members saying, oh, we wish we could talk to you after this episode mm -hmm. or, you know, when everything is revealed at the end, we could have a much more in-depth discussion about all this stuff. So we realize that, you know, there are some constraints that we're all under at this point. But yeah, uh, yeah standing standing invitation to any and all who want to come back and really just let their hair down once everything has been revealed and we know sort of where the series is, is headed. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love we'd love to have you. No, I know. It's one of those shows where you can, I think you guys ask really like unexpected questions or you have unexpected details that you notice that I find I'm like, oh, that's an interesting thing. I didn't think about that, which actually is helpful, you know, in performance when you listen to people talk about the show or things they like about the show. I actually find it interesting or don't like about the show. It doesn't matter because it all is like, oh, okay, that's an interesting view that they have. Like, how could I add that. Oh, I have this scene coming. How would that maybe answer that question? Or, you know, it, it's, it, it's all interesting. And, and that's what I like about art is that whether you like it or don't like it, it's something that people are talking about, which is really the point of it is that you're like, oh, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it. And, and it, and it, I think it exercises your empathy because you are seeing something through somebody else's viewpoint. You're like, well, they would never do that which means you're understanding them to a certain degree. Do you know what I'm saying? Even if you're like, I don't think the character would do that, but you're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's all, um, I just find it all very interesting. People's different views of it. Well, we're gratified that, that you listen to the show and that, um, yeah. you know, uh, it's it's surreal for us because I've said this just on every interview. We're used to talking about a 30 year old show where if we do talk to a guest star, it's a job they had, you know, back in 1989. And let's say, what can I remember? I don't know. Yeah. And here you are in the thick of it. And, you know, we're, we're getting to speak to everybody in real time. It's quite a privilege and just um a great place to be as a quantum leap fan and podcaster. So, I mean, we can't thank you enough for coming, making yourself available, coming and reaching out to the fandom through us. I mean, is there anything else about uh, the Janice character that um, we haven't touched upon that you would, that you would like to explore or any messages for uh, any of the leapers out there who are listening? The leapers. Well, I hope you feel, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what I would say. I mean, you know, I, I, I think, I, I, I mean, I hope that, I don't know, not that I hope people like Janice. I think it's kind of, you know, whatever. I just hope that they feel, uh, actually, I, I don't know. I just want people to enjoy the show and, and I hope that they feel that they're getting, I guess, through Janice. And I think there'll be more of that, that they get more of these details that connect them to the past, which is what's fun for the people who did watch the original series. And, um, I think they will ultimately like her a lot more. Um, and that's all I can, and I, and I hope so. And uh, I guess thanks for being so, you know, welcoming to this. I know for the for the main core cast, you know, they've been like, it's cool. Because I, I listened to obviously Ray and Caitlin's and Ernie's. It was just cool. I know that they were saying about being welcomed into this new thing. Because it is a big, it's big, it's not big shoes to fill. It's new shoes to fill. And it's also finding the balance between the new and the old. And I hope that people are getting at least, you know, some of what they miss and then something new that they get to be like, oh, this is different. Um, yeah. Very well put. Well, thank you very much, Georgina, for appearing with us on the Quantum Leap podcast. Thank you.